Uh, hi everyone, uh, really great to be here. Thank you to our organizers and thank you to the team who's putting this together. Thank thanks again to all of you who came. Uh, my name is Josh Jellick. I'm a staff engineer at Postman. Uh, I work on the Postman API network team and we're responsible for all the public APIs that you see uh, listed on, on Postman. Um, and to, uh, to tell you a little bit about myself, um, I like uh, science fiction, particularly time travel, um, story, stories about going back into the past or forward into the future. Uh, I also like AI agents, probably wouldn't be here if, if I didn't. Um, I'm, I'm naturally kind of a lazy person and I see a lot of potential with AI agents, not to make me less lazy, but to bring down the cost of my laziness. <laughs> so I'm very excited about this. Um, so in, in looking for inspiration for what we're gonna build in the talk, I put these two things together. And uh, today we're gonna make a time travel agent. Uh, funny enough, our agent has a name, uh, at least according to AI, uh, it's the Meet Kronos. Here's Kronos here. He's going to be our concierge um, as we put this, this little project together uh, and talk about MCP in the meantime. Now, if we're going to build an, an agent that helps us go back into the future, or sorry, go back into the past, which we're going to do today, a um, good way to do that would be to have tools that call APIs and have those APIs that accept date ranges and pull us pieces of information from that date range from the, from the past. Um, and APIs that can help us answer a question like, what was the world like in you know, certain year, month, day? Um, and for the sake of today, we're gonna pick a couple of APIs and some really simple stuff like news headlines, crypto prices, fun images, things like that. So we're gonna travel back into the past. Now, of course, I'm gonna use the MCP to provide tools to the agent that we're gonna build. Um, and before we jump into building it, we're gonna, I, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what are the options for creating my, my MCP server. Um, so I know I wanna build this, I know I wanna use a couple of different APIs, I'm gonna need some tools. Um, and, but you know, what, what do I go and do? Do I start writing code? Do I look on the internet? That's what we're gonna talk about. Now, there's a couple options. Option one is that I can find and use existing MCP servers. Uh, there's a lot of advantages here. Uh, certainly, as we know, lots of MC, uh, off-the-shelf MCP servers have been created. Uh, the officially maintained servers are usually pretty good quality. You can usually just plug them in and they work. Um, and best, a lot of, at least by now, a lot of best practices and real-world learnings have been implemented into these MCP servers. Things like tool filtering, uh, token limits, very important things like that because as you've probably seen, sometimes just plugging in a tool or a whole bunch of tools doesn't actually work as, in, as intended. Um, for option one, getting off the shelf MCP servers, there are also a few, uh, a few cons or a few downsides. One is that I'm gonna need one, one MCP server for each company's API that I wanna call. So today we're gonna call a couple APIs from CoinGecko, New York Times, NASA, and if I'm getting off the shelf MCP servers, I'm gonna need one for each one of those. I'm not gonna magically find on the internet an, an off the shelf MCP servers that, that has just these little pieces of APIs that I wanna to talk to. Uh, the other one is that I would definitely need to review the code uh, anytime I grab an MCP server off the internet and I start putting my uh, environment or my API keys into the environment variables, you know, a little alarm bells go off in my head. Uh, there could be code in there if I don't inspect that just takes that and takes my API key and sends it anywhere. And this has become a really big issue. So if we're, we're getting code off the shelf, we have to be very careful of that. Um, and then the other con is that each one of those MCP servers is probably likely to have a lot of tools that I don't actually need. For building our time travel agent, I really just need a, one API from New York Times and one API from CoinGecko. I don't need the entire MCP server for each one. Uh, and in fact, if I do that, there's going to be some problems. When an MCP server has too many tools, uh, it kind of makes everyone sad. Me, because I'm paying a higher cost on all the input tokens in order to put those tools on the prompt. Um, the LLM is, is not happy because it will get lost. If you've tried to give an LLM 100 tools and say, you know, f figure out which one of these to call, you can see the, perf the kind of cognitive performance of the LLM degrade pretty quickly. Uh, it's much better to give it a tight set of tools with a tight set of arguments and you'll have a much better outcome. 
And of course, in the end, it's my users that lose out the most with a frustrating uh, experience and a lower adoption of the agent that I'm building if the agent is consistently unable to make the correct tool calls. Um, now, so that was option one, off the shelf. Option two is build everything myself. Uh, of course, I could just start writing code. I could go get the specs for these APIs and start putting them together and uh, use an MCP framework to do it. The pros is that I have full control, so I can do anything I want. I can make the perfect server, and I'm not running any untrusted code. I'm doing it all myself. Uh, but the cons, of course, are time to build this and time to maintain it. Uh, so let's look at option three. Uh, which was kind of an idea that me and uh, my team had, uh, I don't know, three or four months ago and started putting, putting a project around, uh, together, put, uh, project around uh, together at Postman. And this is what we call generating a use case specific MCP server, uh, where we're gonna grab just the tools that we need. And the pro here is that I get every tool I need and I don't have any that I don't. This is gonna be the best for cost and performance. Uh, it's going to be easy to add and remove tools as my agent evolves. So for example, my time travel agent, if there's another type of information source that I want from the past, I can add another API to, to go get that. Uh, the code is generated by a trusted source. It's not uh, code that's already written. What you'll see is we're going to actually generate the entire server as part of that. So I don't have to be quite as concerned that I'm taking code off of GitHub or the internet and just putting API keys in. Um, and another advantage of this approach, if I do it multiple times, is that all of the different agents uh, that I'm building, they work the same way, and I can tap into all the thousands of APIs on Postman's API network. Um, all right, so that kind of concludes the talk piece. Now for uh, something that's gonna be a lot more fun, the live demo. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on over to that. Uh, all right, I hope the font size is okay. This is about as big as I can make it before the UI starts getting a little bit uglier. So uh, bear with me, I'll try to describe what I'm doing. Uh, this is a page on Postman, it's live, you can visit it, you can try it. Um, and it's called an MCP server generator. This is kind of like a shopping cart experience for API requests where you pick different API requests, you put them into a basket and then you download that entire basket as an MCP server. So we're gonna start building our time travel agent here um, I'm going to click into the search box, and this is going to let me search into Postman's entire network of public APIs. The first API I'm going to go and try and get is from CoinGecko, our time travel agent. One of the things we'll ask it is, what was the price of Bitcoin in Ethereum at this whatever particular time in the past that we care about? So I'm going to click into CoinGecko API. This represents a public workspace on Postman. I'm going to see the collections for that API in the left-hand sidebar. I'm gonna go down to the free public API into the coins folder, and I'm gonna look for an API endpoint uh, called coin historical data by ID. Uh, here you can, th this list on the right hand side are all the, the API requests that live inside of that collection. And I can see the URLs, I can see the HTTP method and a, a description. So I know that this one is gonna be the right one, and I can see that it takes a date as a string, which is exactly what our time travel agent is going to need. So I hit add requests, and in my kind of shopping cart down here, I see that one request from CoinGecko has been added. Uh, I'm now going to add a New York Times uh, API endpoint here, and this is in a, a workspace that I created for the, for the talk. That's why it kind of has a funny name. Uh, but the New York Times API is the collection, and I'm looking for an API request called article search. So I go ahead and check it there, and I can verify it accepts a begin date and an end date. So great, it passes our test. It will be able to give us data based on the time. Uh, and last but not least, we have NASA Open APIs. And so I'm going to go into NASA Open APIs, and we're going to do the very famous astronomy picture of the day. I'm going to check that here. This is my API request, and yes, I have a date that I can uh, give it. I can also give it a start date and an end date to get a range, but either way, I'm going to let the LLM figure out what to actually call it, it but it should work. Okay, so now that um, uh, I've got our three API requests, they're in our cart, I just hit this generate button and really hope it works because there's a lot of you here. Uh, as that's happening, I'll give you a quote. Um, MCPs, uh, MCP is like the glue between AI agents and the real world. And like most glue, it's only invisible until something breaks. Um, so 
hopefully nothing's going to break here. We'll see. Uh, what's actually happening is that this is, this is calling a public Postman API called the Tool Generation API. And for each one of those API requests, it's generating a JavaScript file that's the, the actual code. Um, both the, the client function, do, 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 do. <laughs> Let's retry it. Let's see if we get it again. Um, uh, rate limiting is why that's been happening because it's, it's getting used a little bit more. Um, and maybe some of you jumped on it, but we're, we're working on that. Hopefully this should, hope, <laughs> hopefully, maybe I shouldn't have said that before. Um, but yeah, this is calling a, an, an API to generate a JavaScript file that contains the client function and also the open AI style tool definition, which is then imported in, into the MCP server. And we'll actually go and look at that code. So there was a problem again, no worries. Thankfully we, we have a backup. Uh, I'm just gonna pop over this other tab. What you should have seen is your MCP server is now fully generated and download zip. So we're gonna click download zip. Uh, that works, so that's good. Um, that's popped up into my downloads folder. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna unzip it. Uh, I'm gonna rename it to something more fun than Postman MCP server. I'm gonna rename it to time travel agent. And then I'm gonna go in my downloads folder. I'm gonna go in there into the zip file we just downloaded and I'm gonna open it in cursor so we can check it out. All right, and so what you'll see is pretty much a standard you know, MCP server scaffolding. Uh, what's interesting is that there's a tools directory and inside of this tools directory are each of the API requests that we selected in the UI. So we have a folder for the CoinGecko API, for NASA Open APIs and for uh, our New York Times article search. Um, and then we can go ahead and take a look at the code and see that there's a function to execute. I already know that's gonna break, so I'm gonna get ahead of it. Um, it, it seems to want to use the CoinGecko Pro API. Uh, but the good part of this approach is that because you're actually getting the code, uh, if, it doesn't, if it doesn't work or something's not right here, you can do what I did and just change it to, uh, to work. We would have seen this when we were testing in a few minutes. I'm just getting ahead of that because I don't want to push us too far into the lunch hour. Um, all right, so in order to use this server, uh, we're going to need to do an NPM install. Just a bit of boilerplate here. And then I'm going to copy a pre-prepared uh, an environment file. This has my environment variables for the New York Times, for CoinGecko, uh, for NASA. So I'm not going to flash those on the screen. I'm just going to ask you to believe me that I'm copying those into a .n file over here. And now in theory, I should be able to, to run the server. So I'm going to um, I'm going to get a path to our MCP server file, and I'm going to put it on my clipboard. And then I'm actually going to go into Postman. Uh, Postman has an, a built-in uh, MCP client now, and it's uh, it, it's really great. It's going to allow me to uh, to test our server before we actually plug it into the LLM. So in uh, uh, this is an MCP collection, which is a new concept in Postman, and I can go and add request, and I can add an MCP request, and I can choose between standard I/O or HTTP. We're going to do standard I.O. and I'm going to paste in that file path that uh, I just copied and I'm going to hit connect. And here we go. Um, this is telling me my MCP server has three tools, article search, coin search, and NASA image search. And I can go ahead and uh, fill out arguments for each of those. And I can, uh, can sort of verify that I got two articles back for sports. Uh, now we can go to our coin historical data. I can type in Bitcoin and let's say a, a, a date, September of last year. And I can see that that worked. And now finally, we're going to do NASA's image of the day. Why not for today, 2025, 0523. And we've got an image for the day. So now I've gone through each of the tools in the MCP server. I verified that they work, at least from this context. And now the big culmination, we're going to plug this into uh, an MCP client and we're actually going to run it. So let me flip back over to Cursor here. Of course, we need to tell Cursor that we have a new MCP server that it should hook up to. So we're going to go view, open MCP settings. We're going to turn off the backup that I have, haha. -ha. And we're going to add a new global MCP server. I'm going to copy the backup. And I'm going to call this the much more, much nicer name, Time Travel Agent. 
and time travel agent here. Great, and that one will just leave off, but we've just put in the very basic thing. Probably most of you have seen this uh, before if you're working with MCP. Node is our executable and MCP server is our file. And now uh, we make sure that's turned on, the other one's turned off, and we open a chat. Uh, let's see, got my keyboard shortcuts. Hopefully again, the font is okay. Maybe we can bump it up a little bit higher. All right, now let's type, let, let's have a chat. Hello, you are a friendly time travel agent with access to tools to tell me about the past. Please call, or let's say, please tell me about the world uh, in the week of September 12th, that happens to be my birthday, uh, 2024, we'll go back a year. And um, let's just leave it at that. Let's see if it's smart enough to figure out what to do. Um, sure, so far so good. Um, we have some major world events, yay. I didn't tell it only happy news or fun news, so those are just, that's just the news. Um, <laughs> And, uh, but one thing I like about cursor and most MCP client tools is I can, I can make sure that the parameters and the result are correct. So it did call the article search API. Uh, it searched for world news, that's fine. Uh, but the, with the correct begin and end dates. Um, and then it also searched for the NASA image of the day uh, for that week. That should be f more fun because we can click on any of these and get a beautiful image. That's a, looks like a stellar nursery if I remember. Um, but the important thing is that we've, um, uh, the LLM has figured out and called the tools. The tools that it didn't call uh, were our coin prices. So let's just say like, what about coin prices at that time? Um, and it doesn't seem to like that. Do you have tools? Okay. Um, let's see. Well, anyway, we're, we're wrapping up on time or we're, we're running out of time. So. Um, I think even though we didn't get the, uh, the coin prices there, hopefully the main idea came through that we were able to um, essentially go from user interface, shop for the, exactly the tools that we want for our MCP server, package them into a download, and then connect and run that, run that download. Um, so just want to say we are um, uh, hiring at Postman for an engineer on my team to work on uh, AI tools. Uh, and you can actually apply with a specific MCP server if you if you search for apply for a <laughs> roll with MCP. Sorry, the link. Come find me. I'm wearing this sort of orangish jacket. I'll be easy to find, and so you'll be able to do that. Uh, otherwise, thank you all very much for uh, traveling through time today. Thank you.